In certain parts of the world, including regions of Africa, South America, and even some remote areas of North America, raw diamonds can still be found embedded in ordinary-looking rocks along trails, riverbeds, and dried creek channels. These natural diamonds are not the sparkling gemstones seen in jewelry stores, they often look like cloudy, greasy pebbles with a glassy or translucent appearance. For most people walking along a trail or collecting stones near a river, a raw diamond might be mistaken for quartz, feldspar, or even plain glass. However, a trained eye and a few simple field techniques can make all the difference in spotting something truly valuable hidden in plain sight. The first clue to identifying a potential raw diamond in a natural setting is its hardness. Diamond is the hardest known natural substance, rated 10 on the Mohs hardness scale. Unlike quartz or other minerals, a diamond can easily scratch glass, metal, and most other rocks. A quick but careful scratch test using a piece of glass or steel can help determine if the rock contains something unusually hard. However, this method is not foolproof. Some minerals like corundum can also scratch glass, so multiple indicators must be considered before drawing conclusions. The second major indicator is the appearance under sunlight or a flashlight. While diamonds may not sparkle like cut gemstones, they do reflect light in a distinct way. A raw diamond typically has an oily luster, often described as greasy or metallic rather than glossy. It won't shine like quartz, which usually reflects light more brightly. Instead, the diamond's surface might seem dull at first glance, but it refracts light in a more complex internal way if rotated slowly in the light. Observing this behavior from different angles can help distinguish it from other translucent stones. Weight is another key factor. Diamonds have a relatively high specific gravity, meaning they're heavier than most other rocks of the same size. If a small stone feels surprisingly heavy in the hand, it might be worth inspecting further. This is especially true if the stone also matches the other visual and hardness criteria. Sometimes, small dense stones can be mistaken for lead or hematite, but when combined with the greasy luster and the inability to be scratched, the chances of it being a diamond increase. The shape of the stone also provides useful information. Natural diamonds often form in octahedral or cubic shapes, and they sometimes appear with curved or pitted surfaces due to erosion. While these shapes may be worn down in rivers or trails, certain angular patterns or the presence of smooth, flat faces can still hint at the crystal's origin. Unlike rounded quartz or river-polished pebbles, diamonds tend to preserve some sharpness in their edges, especially in protected cracks or deeper sediment layers. Some diamonds may also display what's known as a frosted surface, where micro-pitting from natural wear gives the stone a somewhat matte finish. This feature, while making the stone look even less glamorous, is actually an indicator that the stone is natural and has been weathered rather than synthetically produced or polished. When this is seen alongside a solid internal consistency, without visible layering or internal fractures, it becomes a stronger visual signal of authenticity. In areas where diamonds are geologically possible, such as ancient volcanic pipes or eroded kimberlite zones, certain types of rocks may act as indicators. Kimberlite and lamproite are the primary host rocks for diamonds, and fragments of these materials can sometimes be found alongside rivers or trails where erosion has exposed deeper mineral layers. If unusual blue-gray or greenish rocks are observed in an area with dense mineral content, it's worth investigating the surrounding stones more closely, as diamonds might have traveled with those deposits. Magnetism is not usually associated with diamonds, but some diamond-bearing rocks contain magnetite or other metallic inclusions. A simple magnet test might help eliminate false positives by identifying magnetic materials like magnetite, which are often mistaken for precious stones due to their weight and color. A true diamond will not be magnetic, nor will it conduct electricity in most forms, making these traits another set of field indicators to consider when evaluating a suspicious stone. For amateur rock hunters and curious explorers, a small magnifying glass or jeweler's loop can be an essential tool. Under 10x magnification, a raw diamond often reveals a clean and unified crystal structure without the fibrous or layered appearance found in many common minerals. It may also show minute growth patterns or inclusions that follow consistent, geometric paths, unlike the chaotic patterns found in quartz or calcite. These details, though subtle, offer strong hints to those with patience and attention to detail. While none of these tests alone can guarantee a stone is a raw diamond, 
combining several methods, scratch testing, weight comparison, visual inspection, and crystal structure, can significantly increase the likelihood of a correct field identification. For a definitive result, a suspected diamond should always be tested by a certified gemologist, who can perform refractive index tests, thermal conductivity checks, and more advanced analysis. Still, for those willing to look closely and learn the visual and physical language of raw diamonds, nature sometimes hides its greatest treasures in the most unassuming of stones. Once a potential raw diamond has been identified using field techniques, the next step is understanding what to do with it, and more importantly, what not to do. Many beginners make the mistake of polishing or altering the stone before it's been professionally evaluated, which can reduce its value or make verification more difficult. Raw diamonds, especially those found in natural settings, should be preserved in their original condition. This means placing them in a small plastic container or wrapping them gently in a soft cloth and noting the exact location where the stone was found. Even if it later proves to be a different mineral, that data can be valuable in identifying geological patterns or locating zones with diamond-bearing potential. Transporting stones from natural areas must also be done responsibly and legally. In some regions, collecting rocks or minerals from public lands is allowed in small quantities for personal use, but in other areas, especially designated mining zones or national parks, such collection is strictly prohibited. Always check local regulations before removing materials. Being cautious in this regard not only respects legal boundaries but helps preserve ecological and scientific integrity of natural sites. If an area has a history of kimberlite or lamproite deposits, local geology maps or university mining databases can provide clues on where diamonds are more likely to be naturally present. It's also important to remember that diamonds in the rough are often accompanied by other heavy indicator minerals. Garnet, chromite, and ilmenite are common examples. These are known as pathfinder minerals and often appear in the same erosional paths as diamonds because they come from similar source rocks and have similar densities. When a collector starts finding unusually dense black or red minerals in stream sediment, it's often a sign that diamond exploration may be worthwhile in that area. Over time, learning to identify and interpret these patterns becomes as important as recognizing the diamond itself. In many documented cases, small-scale prospectors have uncovered diamonds by sieving and washing gravel from shallow streams, focusing on areas behind large rocks, bends in the stream, or depressions in the riverbed where heavy particles naturally settle. The technique is similar to gold panning. A wide, shallow pan is used to agitate the sediment in water, allowing lighter materials to wash away while heavier stones remain. With experience, this process reveals which particles are merely dense and which might be something exceptional. Even a single stone recovered this way can carry significant value if it turns out to be gem quality. For those who want to take identification a step further without visiting a gemologist immediately, some basic home testing kits are available online. These may include a diamond tester that measures thermal conductivity, a property that distinguishes diamonds from most look-alike minerals. While not foolproof, these handheld devices can provide a useful preliminary result. However, some synthetic diamonds and certain moissanites can fool thermal testers, which is why further professional examination is always recommended before selling or declaring a find. In rare but real cases, people have unknowingly held onto raw diamonds for years, mistaking them for simple stones. There are reports of families using them as paperweights or storing them in jars until someone with knowledge recognizes their true value. Stories like these remind us that the earth still holds countless secrets, and that ordinary people, walking on trails, camping by rivers, or exploring dry creek beds, may stumble upon something extraordinary with nothing more than curiosity and careful observation. While the dream of finding a diamond on a casual walk may seem far-fetched, it is not impossible. In regions with ancient volcanic activity or known kimberlite belts, unpolished diamonds do surface through erosion and movement over centuries. Rivers act as natural conveyors, washing stones from deep underground sources to more accessible ground levels. That's why seemingly random trails or gravel-covered hiking paths might hold more than just dust and leaves. Knowing where to look, what to look for, and how to examine rocks with purpose can turn a simple nature walk into a potentially life-changing discovery. The reality, however, is that most field-identified stones will not be diamonds. Quartz, zircon, spinel, 
and even pieces of man-made glass can mimic many of a diamond's characteristics to the untrained eye. But this is not a reason to stop searching, it is motivation to learn more, test more, and refine the eye for detail. The knowledge gained during this process not only enhances the chances of a real discovery but builds a deeper connection with geology, nature, and the hidden stories written in stone. Every rock has a history, a journey formed by pressure, heat, and time. Some become building blocks, others are crushed into gravel. But a few, by chance or by destiny, carry the unmatched hardness and brilliance of carbon atoms locked in a perfect crystal structure. These are the diamonds that lie in silence, waiting for someone with the patience to find them, the wisdom to recognize them, and the respect to treat them with care. For those willing to look closely, nature still whispers its secrets under the weight of ordinary rocks.